Yeah, let's open up uh, the Tudor book of Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah 1. Call to return to Yahweh's safety. Call to return to Yahweh's safety. Zechariah's prophecies began two months after a guy's first message in 520 before class. At least 30 people mentioned in the Bible uh, are identifiers uh, that uh, I have the name, the name of uh, Zechariah, uh, bear the name of Zechariah. Zechariah, which means Yahweh remembers the prophet and author of this book, however, is further identified as being the son of Berechia, the grandson of Edu. He was born during Judah's captivity in Babylon and returned to Jerusalem with the group led by Zerubbabel. Edo was a priest during that time of captivity, as we see it in Nehemiah 12 verses 1 to 7. And Zechariah eventually succeeds his grandfather in that role. After about 70 years of exile in a foreign land, Yahweh's people are released in application of a decree issued by King Cyrus of Pers King Cyrus, uh, 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 the Great of Persia, years before, to return to their homeland, only to discover that the walls and temple of Jerusalem have been demolished. Projects are plans for reconstruction, but the people need much encouragement and faith during this period. As both prophet and priest, Zechariah brings assurance of Yahweh's fit, faithfulness and hope for the future of his people. The book of Agai, the books of Agai, Zechariah and Malachi, were written in the post-exilic period of Israel's history to offer hope to a people whose national and personal personal lives uh, had been shattered by the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem and captivity of the people. Zechariah goes beyond a guy's burden for the immediate earthly situation of the post-exilic uh, community and sees through a vision and, and dream, the unfolding of divine purpose for all of Yahweh's people and for all the ages to come. In his opening message, Zechariah warned the people uh, who had just begun rebuilding the temple that they were, they were to listen to Yahweh's message through the prophets. They were also to keep a close relationship with Yahweh so that uh, there would be no further judgment. These opening mes messages followed by visions that offered encouragement to the builders at a time when they were ready to give up. Zechariah comforted them by telling them Yahweh had a long range plan for Israel. This prophecy is suitable to all, as the scope is to reprove for a sin and threaten Yahweh's judgments against the impenitent and to encourage those who fear Yahweh with assurances of the mercy of God, uh, the mercy God had in store for his church, and especially of the coming of the Messiah and the setting up his kingdom in the world. Zechariah 1 verses 1 to 6 an exhortation to repentance. Verse 1 Zechariah here identified as the son of Berechiah and uh, Berechiah and the grandson of Edo the priest is also mentioned in Israel 5 verse 1 and 6 verse 14 
and in Nehemiah 12 verse 16. However, both of those citations imply that the prophet is the son of Edo. Another mentions uh, Berechiah. It is likely that Zedekiah's father died and uh, young Zedekiah was raised by his grandfather. This would also explain why uh, Zechariah succeeds Edo, his grandfather, as priest. As we see it also in Nehemiah 12, verses 10 to 15. Verses 2 to 4, Zedekiah begins his book with a solemn exhortation to learn from history. Yahweh had been extremely displeased with the generations past because they have stubbornly refused to heed the appeal of their prophets to turn to Yahweh. The evil way between quote evil ways reference is not to to it is not to incidents incidental sins but to a whole pattern of rebellion and disloyalty. Yahweh's, Yahweh's almighty power and sovereign dominion should engage and encourage sinners to repent and turn to Him. It is very desirable to have the Lord of hosts uh, uh, for our friends and very dreadful to have Him as our enemy. Review, review what is past and observe the message of Yahweh sent by his servants, the prophets, to your fathers. Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. Be persuaded to leave your sins as the only way to prevent approaching ruin. What happened to our fathers? and to the prophets who preached to them. They are all dead and gone. Here they were in the towns and countries where we live, passing and repassing in the same streets, dwelling in the same houses, trading in the same shops and exchanges, worshipping God in the same places. But where are they? When they died, there was not an end of them. They are in eternity in the world of spirits, the unchangeable world to which we hasten a pace. Where are they? Those of them who lived and died in sin are in torment. Those who lived and died in Christ are in heaven and if we live and die as they did we will be with them shortly and eternally if they did not mind their own souls is that a reason why their prosperity should ruin theirs also the prophets are gone the Messiah is a prophet that lives forever. But all other prophets have a period put to their office. Oh, that this consideration had its due weight. That dying ministers are dealing with dying people about their never dying souls and an awful eternity upon the brink of which both are standing. In another world, both we and our prophets will live forever. To prepare for, for that world should be our great care in this one. The preachers died and the hearers died. But the word of God did not die. Not one jot 
All title of it fell to the ground for Yahweh's righteous. Remember, this same, this same Zechariah is preached as I do since more than 2,500 2, years ago. And he keeps, he keeps being preached. The word of God is there while we come and we, we pass and the word of God is still there. Zechariah 1 verse 7 to 17 A vision of the ministry of angels. Verse 7 The dead here equates on to, to Febru February the 15th year 519 before Christ on the modern calendar approximately three months after the initial call of Zechariah in, in verse 1 and two months after Agai's last revelation in Agai 2 verse 20 verses, 20, verses 10 and 20 significant events around that this time that may have bearing on elements of Zechariah's a first vision are first the return of Darius to Persia uh, to Persia from Egypt through Palestine through through the, the, the land of Israel and second the approaching of New Year Day a time when Zerubbabel will be crowned as Judah's king restoring a Davidic sub successor to the throne the throne of Judah actually Israel because there were no Israel separate from Judah anymore this we see that in Agai 2, 2 verses 20 to 23 verse 8 the myrtle is a flagrant decorative shrub that sometimes reaches the size of a tree it is used in connection connection with the feast of the tabernacles and in post biblical times in betrothal ceremonies its perpetual greenness and aromatic qualities provide a suitable setting for the inauguration of Yahweh's domain domain which is everlasting and pleasing in every way and that is why uh, uh, the, the symbol of it is used here verses 8 to 11 the mission of the rider on the red horse and presumably all four horses with different colors is to walk across the whole the whole earth to walk to and fro through the earth is to assert sovereignty over it we can see that in genesis 13 verse 17 job 1 verse 7 ezekiel 28 verse 14 here yahweh through the symbolism of four cavalry charges announces that he is the lord of all verse 12 jeremiah had already referred to to a 70 year a period anyway he is the prophet who said the exile is going to last 70 years and now Zerekiah is at the end of it prophesying at the end of it so this is dating its uh, uh, it, it, its end to the demise of the Babylonian the Chaldean kingdom as we see it in Jeremiah 25 verses 1 to 12 it is clearly understood however that the 70 years have a flexible starting and concluding date because their determination is also connected to the completion of the second temple which verse 16 refers to here the completion of Jerusalem's second temple takes place in 516 before Christ exactly 70 years after the destruction of Solomon's temple in 586 before Christ. The prophet saw a dark shady grove 
the hidden by hills. This represented the low melancholy condition of the Jewish church. A man like a warrior sat on a red horse in the midst of this shady myrtle grove. So the church was in a low condition, Christ was present in the midst, ready to appear for the relief of his people. Behind him were angels ready to be employed by him, some in acts of judgment, others of mercy, acts of mercy, others in mixed events. Would we know something of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven? We must apply not to angels, for they are themselves learners, but to Yahweh himself, Yahshua, him, Yahshua, his son himself, he is ready to teach those humbly desirous to learn the things of Yahweh. The nations near Judea enjoyed peace at that time, but the state of the Jews was unsettled. Which, which gave rise to the pleading that followed. But mercy must only be hoped for through Christ. His intercession for his church prevails. Yahweh answered the angel, this angel of the covenant, with promises of mercy and deliverance. All the good words and comfortable words of the gospel we receive from Yahshua, the Messiah, as he received them from Father Yahweh in answer to the prayer of his blood. And his ministers are to preach them to all the world. The earth sat still and was at rest. It is not uncommon for the enemies of Yahweh to be at rest in sin. And uh, wh while his people are enduring correction, harassed by temptation, disquieted by fears of wrath, or groaning under oppression and, or persecution, here are predictions that has reference to the revival of the Jews after the captivity. But those events were shadows of what will take place in the church after the oppression of the New Testament Babylon is ended. The New Testament Babylon is uh, certainly Roma. Zechariah 1 verses 18 to 21. The security of the Jews and the destruction of their enemies. Zechariah's vision con contains two elements. Four horns and four carpenters or craftsmen. So the interpretation is divided into two parts. In response to the query about the horns the angelic interpreter first asserts that they are scatterers of Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Under further interrogation, he adds that the ones are associated with the nations. The nations had used their ones, ones which means military power to effect the dispersion of Yahweh's people. Verse 21. The task of the carpenter is to bring down the nations to nullify the effect of their great power, their horns. The ultimate result will presumably reverse the scattering so that the dispersed can again, can return again to their land. The enemies of the church threaten to cut off the name of Israel. They are horns, emblems of power, strength, and violence. 
the, pro the prophet saw them so formidable that he began to despair of the safety of every good man and the success of, of, of every good work. But Yahweh showed him four workmen, four carpenters empowered to cut off these horns. With an eye of sense, we see the power of the enemies of the church. We look which way we will. The world shows us that. But it is only with an eye of faith that we see it safe. Yahweh shows us that when God has work to do, he will raise up some to do it and others to defend it and still others to protect those employed in doing it. What cause there is to look up in love and praise to the Holy and Eternal Spirit who has the same care over the present and eternal interest of the believers? by the Holy Word bringing the church to know the wonderful things of salvation. Know this and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Let us take these prayer points. Let us pray Zechariah 1. Yahweh was very angry with our ancestors in the name of Yeshua. Therefore, O people, hear the word of Yahweh Almighty. Return to him and our Lord will return to you in the name of Yeshua. Therefore, O people, hear the word of Yahweh Almighty. Return to him and your Lord will, our Lord will return to you. In the name of Yeshua, therefore, O people, hear the word of Yahweh Almighty. Return to him and our Lord will return to you. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Do not be like our ancestors, to whom the earlier prophets proclaimed to turn from their evil ways and practices, but they would not listen or pay attention to Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, do not be like our ancestors, to whom the earlier prophets proclaimed to turn from their evil ways and practices, but they would not listen or pray and pay attention to Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, do not be like our ancestors, to whom the earlier prophets proclaimed to turn from their evil ways and practices, but they would not listen or pay attention to Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we pray. Our ancestors are gone now. And the prophets do not live forever. In the name of Yeshua, our ancestors are gone now. And the prophets do not live forever. In the name of Yeshua, our ancestors are gone now. And the prophets do not live forever. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. But Yahweh the words and decrees which he commanded his servants, the prophets, did overtake our ancestors in the name of Yeshua but Yahweh's words and decrees which he commanded his servants the prophet did overtake our ancestors in the name of Yeshua but Yahweh's words and decrees which he commanded his servants the prophet did undertake our ancestors thank you Lord all to your glory in the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah we pray then they repented for Yahweh Almighty has done to them what their ways and practices deserve, just as he determined to do. In the name of Yeshua, then they repented. For Yahweh Almighty has done to them what their ways and practices deserve, just as he determined to do. In the name of Yeshua, then they repented. For Yahweh Almighty has done to them what their ways and practices deserve, just as he determined to do. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. You, that man, mounted on a red horse, 
standing out among the myrtle tree in a writhing uh, with red, brown, and white horses behind you. Who are you? In the name of Yeshua, you that man, mounted on a red horse, standing among the myrtle tree in a ravine with red, brown, and white horses behind. Who are you? In the name of Yeshua, you that man, mounted on a red horse, standing among the myrtle trees in a ravine with red, brown, and white horses behind. Who are you? Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. They are the ones Yahweh has sent to go throughout the earth to show his sovereignty over the earth. In the name of Yeshua, they are the ones Yahweh has sent to go throughout the earth to show his sovereignty over the earth. In the name of Yeshua,